kind of have an interesting situation here. I have this piece of plywood and I want to take this edge off right here. This piece of plywood is just under 36 inches this way and right about five feet going this way for those that need to know. I want to just cut this one strip off the edge here. I don't have a track saw. Um, I do have one of these sort of straight line rip jigs for one of my cordless uh, circular saws. And the issue with these is that they wobble. I have two of them. I have this one and a DeWalt and they both have the same issue where the bottom plate flexes and, and it moves. And I want this to be a nice finish ready cut right off the saw. I don't want to have to come back and sand it or trim it up. So that's not going to be an option either. I could make an enormous table saw sled. The problem with the enormous table saw sled is I don't have anywhere to put it. And if I did find a place to put it, by the time I ever used it again, it would probably be warped and twisted and I wouldn't want to be using it again anyway. So there's no point in doing that. Uh, one other option that I could do, I have a straight edge here. And by straight edge, I just mean something with a straight enough edge that I think it's straight. Uh, it doesn't have to be machine perfect. What we can do is we could use double side tape on this side and then we could tape this on the edge here, squaring it up to one of these edges and leaving a little bit of an overhang here. That way the fence is gonna register against this straight edge as opposed to this crummy edge and that's gonna trim this right off here. That does work, but this piece of plywood has a little bit of a wow to it. I don't wanna use so much tape to get that bubble out of there, so we're not gonna go that route either, but that does work. Um, I will put a link to a video where I use that on a very expensive cutting board and it worked flawlessly uh, if you guys are interested. Trick that I wanna show you today is going to let us take that scrap little edge off there, the rough edge, and it would also really work for material breakdown. My max on my table saw here is 36 to this side to be able to use that fence. That's not 48, right? 48 is half a sheet of a four by eight sheet of plywood. And if I wanna rip that or cut that in half, I have to get creative on how to do that. Or again, I have to get down with a circular saw on the floor. And again, I don't like the cut that it leaves. So this trick would work really good for breaking down large panels into smaller panels. The trick itself takes just a minute to set up, but I wanna go over a couple of things first that you have to check things you need to know before you can do this on your saw. So let's start with the blade and the edge of the table. All right, we're gonna be using the edge of the table itself to do this. Now, normally this isn't checked when we checked like the blade to the miter slots to the fence to make sure those are all parallel. We never check this end of the table and that's because we never use it. But in this one, we are going to use this. So two things, one, I need to know that I have the same measurement from here to here and here to here. I'm measuring off one of the teeth. The tape measure is perfectly fine for this. It's not gonna matter. I have 22 and 30 second and here. I have 22 and a 30 seconds. So as far as I'm concerned, this is parallel enough for me that I can actually make this work. The second thing is the condition of this edge right here. If you have a saw where there's a bunch of divots and everything else right here, you don't wanna use that regular edge. You wanna make your own edge. So fasten a ledger to here. You can drill bolt uh, holes through here and bolt this on. And you can make it out of anything. You can fur it out with a couple washers to make this parallel but we wanna make sure it's parallel and we wanna make sure that it's relatively smooth. It doesn't have to be waxed or anything else. It just needs to be able to let a straight edge glide across here. That'll make more sense in a second. So 22 and a 30 second is what I had right here. I'm gonna take that measurement over to my plywood. All right, so this is the edge I wanna knock off. I'm just taking off a little bit here. So I just have this little mark, just about an eighth of an inch off of here. I am setting up this block down here. This has nothing to do with this trick. I'm just trying to save myself a headache because I wanna be able to run my tape measure up here without it falling down, hopefully. All right, I'm gonna line up the one inch mark on my tape measure with that little tick that I just made right there at about an eighth of an inch, right? So one inch lined up with that. We had 22 and a 30 second. I'm gonna go all the way down to 23 and a 30 second. I'm just gonna make a mark. And the reason I did that, it's called burning an inch. It's so that we don't have to mess with the hook down here to try and line this up perfectly. But if you were to line this up, 
you can see that I'm at 22 and at 30 seconds. So I have that distance. So once again, this is the mark from where I want the blade to cut off. This is the distance between my blade and my edge of the table. I'm gonna take my square here and I'm just going to transfer this right over to the other side and I'm actually going to draw a little X right here on the side of the plywood. That's gonna tell me where my fence needs to go. So let's throw our fence on there and we can cut this off. All right, so now I have my plywood up here. This is my cut edge. This is the mark that tells me where this fence needs to go. I'm gonna take my fence, I'm gonna take a square, and I'm going to line this up right on my mark. Obviously, it depends on how accurate you need this to be. I'm gonna take a clamp. I want my fence and my clamps and everything on this side. So my blade is on this side. I want all these clamps on this side. We're gonna flip this over here in a second and I don't want these clamps getting in the way. So we're gonna tighten this down. I'll leave my square there so that I can just double check this before I flip it over and cut it. That is square enough for me. Actually, it's not. We're gonna tap that back just a little tiny bit. Perfect. Okay, now I just want to tighten these up because I don't want them scooting. We're gonna raise the blade up high enough to be able to cut the plywood. I'm gonna flip this over and then I'm gonna start running it right through the saw and all of this is gonna make a ton of sense. All right, so I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to see this very well or not, but this is our plywood edge that we just cut. It's perfectly clean. There's no saw marks, there's no splintering. I can use this just as intended right off the saw. This, like I said, a little bit of setup, but it's gonna work great for you guys, especially if you have uh, saws that don't have a lot of capacity to begin with. Just rig it up so you can do this trick and you should be good to go.